This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tim Bost is in the house. Hello, sir. How are you this morning? Well, still living the dream on the green side of the grass, my friend. 37 degrees here in Tucson is very cold, but we're okay. How's your weather okay. down there? In That's Chile? true. Well, we've, we've been having days in the mid-80s and, uh, uh, you know, uh, typical Florida nonsense we have to deal with here. But we're ready to rock and roll, got our dancing shoes on, ready to make things happen here. Uh, you're going to talk to us a little bit about the Bitcoin. A little bit about the bit. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Let's see here if I can. Uh, one of our one of our I listeners is asking if, if whether you think this is a con game or is it something physically good. What What's your opinion, Tim? <laughs> so uh, physical, it's not, you know, because it's all imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not physically good. Uh, we're yeah. asking here whether this is fool's gold or is this the new gold, and I tend more toward the uh, the latter uh, opinion myself. Uh, uh, certainly, we've got very, very volatile action uh, in the Bitcoin markets, and uh, that's likely to continue. We, we're seeing these waves of, of uh, speculation coming in, especially as uh, more and more mainstream financial institutions reveal the fact that they're putting at least a small portion of their portfolios into Bitcoin. It's uh, gaining greater and greater credibility, and I think for the long run, this is something we dare not ignore. Uh, so uh, that's kind of my, my take on things here. As, as well, though, we, we need to remember that like any uh, volatile market, uh, it doesn't always just go up. <laughs> and so uh, be rational yeah. about our trading, and that's one of the things we want to pay attention to here, uh, trying to figure out how to trade what we see. And uh, that's uh, kind of the theme for this program, I think. So let's take a look at that. Um, Ten days ago, uh, on the 20th, 21st of, uh, of February, thereabouts, uh, Bitcoin was uh, hitting a high of $58,364. Uh, per Bitcoin, that was a new all-time record and a huge amount of speculative mania going into that. Uh, we saw a pretty precipitous drop uh, since that time. And as of just a couple of days ago on the uh, uh, 27th of, of uh, February, uh, we saw it hit uh, back down to the range of 43,500. And then earlier this morning, uh, it was trying to poke above 50,000 again, uh, 49,776. And I think we're roughly in that same range right about now. Uh, it's uh, you know a little bit of up and down here so far this morning, uh, but uh, what we're looking at here is a different kind of trading range that we're considering, and in looking at all of this uh, dynamics with uh, the the speculation and the uh, rapid market action in Bitcoin, uh, we of course like to incorporate some of our astrological studies to try to make sense of all of this, and so with that in mind, uh, one of the hidden factors that we are looking at uh, is the harmonic. Uh, a connection between Mars and Kronos. And this is a very interesting uh, planetary pair to take a, a look at here. And it, it has provided us with some pretty solid guidance along the way uh, in terms of understanding what's actually going on with Bitcoin. Now, Mars, of course, uh, is our next-door neighbor in the solar system. It's gotten lots of publicity here over the last uh, week or two with the uh, Mars lander and, and sending back amazing pictures and uh, all of the, uh, the the perfect landing on Mars, all, all that kind of stuff. This, of course, is not the first time we've visited uh, the planet with our little robots and it's sending back great information. So it is nearby. Uh, and uh, Mars, however, on a symbolic level, level is all about taking dramatic action. Uh, Mars is named after the ancient god of war, and so the idea is that we want to get things moving, and Mars moves rather rapidly compared to other bodies in the, uh, the solar system. It has about a two-year orbital period, a two-year cycle, uh, so it'll come back to any point in the zodiac once every two years, and so we can, uh, it's something that we can uh, backtest fairly readily because of that. Kronos, on the other hand, is one of these weird guys. It's a trans-Neptunian factor, uh, and in fact, a Kuiper belt object, which is way, way outside 
inside the orbit of, of Pluto uh, with that, uh, and it has, in fact, a, a, an orbital period of about 522 years, uh, so it's extremely slow moving, and it provides kind of a back, uh, background rhythm, if you will. But Kronos uh, uh, seems to be associated with extreme highs, and that's one of the reasons we find it very, very applicable uh, to uh, the Bitcoin market. Uh, Kronos is about the top floor of the building or the, the chief executive or the, a new high in the market, <laughs> anything that goes up. And so we're looking at these patterns in harmonically between Mars, which moves fairly rapidly, and Kronos is kind of a, a slower-moving background factor. Now, longer term, uh, this is what uh, we've done with our uh, Bitcoin charts and in tracking these lines, uh, the uh, uh, horizontal or di diagonal red lines are the positions of Mars, uh, and then the horizontal lines are the positions of Kronos. So what we've seen here over time is that these uh, harmonic uh, implications of Kronos are very, very important. If you look at the lower left there, uh, you can see before all of this took off in uh, late uh, 2017, a Kronos line was providing uh, resistance for the Bitcoin market, uh, and then, of course, broke through that first harmonic, uh, heavier purple line across the middle of the chart. That was the first harmonic Kronos line uh, on its way upward in the big uh, zoom up right at the end of uh, 2017. Uh, after it broke back below that, that uh, first harmonic Kronos line provided uh, consistent resistance, and so the, later uh, this past uh, year, uh, back in December, when it began to break out with, from that as a base, uh, it really caught our attention uh, then with that. Uh, so these are some of the underlying patterns that we're looking at longer term uh, with uh, Bitcoin, uh, and uh, certainly th that Kronos uh, Mars dynamic gives us a lot of information. So the eight harmonic dynamics between Mars and Kronos can help us project more specific support and resistance levels, and that's one of the things that we're looking at uh, currently here. Uh, this is a yeah. current uh, yes. Tim, we have a question from one of our listeners, and it's uh, on my mind, too. You know, when we look at our rankings of the the uh, uh, Timer Digest, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of the top ten, uh, five of them always are uh, astrologers. You know, you and uh, you were in there, and Arch Crawford's been in there, and, uh, I can't, well, there's so many of them, I can't think of them off. The, uh, Bill Meridi was in there. I mean, there right. were five of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, Barry Rose, I mean, a lot of right. the, uh, five of the top ten. So there's, uh, you know, a lot of credence to this, and the Foundation for the Study of Cycles supports that. But why is it that, you know, this old cowboy's never heard of this Kronos and Mars stuff? I, I've never done any of those trans-Neptunian things, and can you explain the difference between trans-Neptunian and uh, the classical astrologer uh, stuff? Sure, yeah, let, let, let's take a minute and, and, and dig into that, because I think it's an important understanding here. Um, uh, throughout the history of astrology, um, we've uh, know, known about it for at least 5,000 years or so, give or take a little change there. And uh, during that time, m for most of the time, we were dealing with only those planets that could be seen with the naked eye. This is pre uh, the advanced technology of telescopes, <laughs> which came along with uh, Galileo a couple hundred years ago. Uh, so basically, we were dealing with the sun and the moon, uh, Mercury, Mars, Venus, uh, Jupiter, and Saturn. And so those seven planetary bodies were uh, what was, uh, astrology was built on for literally thousands of years. And most of our understanding of how things work was based on that. Um, so we, we, we've got to pay a few we'll, bills. We'll dig into an this, is very, yeah, this is very interesting. Please, we'll be right back with Tim Boss, folks. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, talking with Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly, and we're talking about the Mars and Kronos uh, trans-Neptunian aspects. 
Right, and we were delving into ancient history, which was a good time to take a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. We, we tend to get a little erudite from time to time. At any rate, we had all of the uh, major planets out through Saturn uh, known to the ancients uh, in astrology. That's what astrology was really founded on. Uh, back in the late uh, 1700s, we had the discovery, thanks to the use of telescopes, of the planet Uranus. And then about 100 years later, uh, the discovery of Neptune. And back in 1930, about 90 years ago or change, uh, we had uh, the discovery of Pluto. And so uh, astrology adapted uh, to all of this uh, knowledge of these additional planets as they were discovered. Uh, astrologers uh, work with symbolic meanings largely, but they also are keen to observe what's happening in the cosmos. About a hundred years ago, we had a fellow named Alfred Witte in Germany who figured that there must be more planets that we hadn't discovered yet. And he came up with his projections of the orbits of these planets. Uh, we refer to these as the trans-Neptunian factors uh, because at that time, the outermost known planet was Neptune. So these are trans-Neptune. They go beyond the orbit of Neptune. We hadn't discovered Pluto yet. And so uh, what we have discovered since about 20 years ago with our space telescope telescopes is that there's a whole bunch of stuff out there in the outer realm of the solar system, lots of little rocks that we refer to as the Kuiper Belt. Uh, that's K-U-I-P-E-R, Kuiper Belt Objects. And so it turns out that the uh, planets, uh, the trans-Neptunian factors that uh, were postulated by Vita 100 years ago actually match up pretty well with a lot of these uh, little Kuiper Belt objects. And so uh, we're going back to Vita's work and tracking his orbits and projections for these planets. Uh, there are a group of astrologers who refer to as kind of the Uranian school of astrology. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, the good advice of my friend Bill Meridian, he uh, uh, suggested some years ago to me that you need to take a serious look at this, in especially in terms of financial charts. And so I've been working with that uh, ever since and finding it more and more valuable. So what happens is this. What we're looking at is a fast-moving planet, Mars, and that gives us lots of, of uh, short-term fluctuations in the markets. But we compare that with a much slower moving body. And we can take Saturn, for example. This is about a 30-year orbit. This is one of the factors that W.D. Gann used a great deal in his work. Uh, or, or we can go even farther out, so to speak, and use these uh, trans-Neptunian factors. And I've discovered that uh, the particular factor, Kronos, is very, very applicable to a couple of things. One is Bitcoin and then also with gold. With Bitcoin, we're using Mars and Kronos. With gold, we use the Sun and Kronos uh, to do our price projections. And they hold up pretty well. Uh, so it's still experimental, but uh, we like to share our experiments. Well, this is really good, really interesting stuff, Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you want to go ahead and continue then with the rest of your uh, slides? Sure, yeah. So what's going on here? This uh, particular chart, uh, we put on the price from a little earlier this morning. Uh, there in the middle of the chart, uh, 48742 I think it may be $1,000 higher than that right now, so it'll fluctuate. But just to kind of put this in perspective, and, of course, these are based on daily closes uh, with Bitcoin. The market never actually closes, but we take a snapshot and so these are our, our price projections our price history based on that uh, as you can see we went made that high uh, around uh, the 20th 21st of February uh, at uh, 58,000 and change and since that time we've been in a bit of retreat and so this is what we're looking at what does this mean to us in terms of Bitcoin where should we be positioning things there are lots of folks that have jumped into this market very hastily without much knowledge of Bitcoin or of trading because uh, there's that big FOMO thing, the fear of missing out. And so uh, yeah. it's uh, it generated a lot of action on that basis. Uh, that's what has been driving the price up here. Well, wow, this is we really interesting seen? stuff. Yeah, but what we're seeing right now, of course, is a pullback, and this is one of the things, one of the recent times you and I talked, we were comparing this to the tulip bulb market <laughs> a couple hundred years ago and saying this ain't that, <laughs> because we are definitely seeing a, a more mature market with pullbacks and, and support and resistance uh, factors that we need to take into consideration. So what we're looking at right now are these support and resistance zones that are all based on the planetary positions of chronos, and we're looking at this in eight harmonic increments. 
increments. And so we're adding uh, $4,500 to each uh, measure there uh, to get our, our zones that we're watching uh, with Bitcoin. And you can see it holds up fairly well. Uh, right now, we are working very, very actively with that resistance uh, zone uh, that kicks in at $50,730. And so uh, that, uh, we're, we're making another effort to stab back above that. Uh, recently, it tested that, and, and it failed. Uh, so the more uh, active that becomes, of course, based on our uh, rules of technical analysis, the, uh, the stronger the resistance becomes. But we're also right now watching those support zones because this can give us a uh, – and uh, anticipation of where there might be buying points uh, for the longer term. And we're looking at these uh, as pullbacks as buying opportunities, really, at, at, at this uh, particular point. Uh, so that's uh, a part of what we're looking at there. Our projection at this point, based on uh, these Kronos uh, indicators, is that we'll uh, get more uh, positive action coming. Uh, now, during the course of this year, we're looking at these eight harmonic alignments between Mars and Kronos. Uh, February 26th, uh, last Friday, we had the first one that occurred, and that's when we began to see a little short-term rebound in, in Bitcoin. As you recall, we were looking at our chart uh, earlier and said that on the, the, the uh, 26th, 27th of February, we had that low at about uh, 4,500 uh, 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 excuse me, 45, uh, 43,500, uh, and then since that time it's moved back up. We're watching next the conjunction coming up on May 13th as another inflection point, and then we have dates in July, October, and December as well. Uh, so uh, we, when we talk about these eight harmonic alignments, it's not happening every day, but it gives us some anticipation of potential trigger points in the markets. And based on our back testing, then what we are seeing here uh, with the uh, the, the chrono situation uh, is that we, we can anticipate uh, an upward trend uh, coming out out of that, and so uh, that's that's one of the of the things that we uh, keep an keep an eye on uh, with that. Um, so based on that, then uh, we ha anticipating uh, an additional rally, but we also look at other models as well. Oh, here's our our back test with that uh, particular Mars Chronos eight harmonic. Typically, and uh, that zero date would be the uh, February 26th date. So we're looking for a move upward into uh, the, the equinox on uh, March the, the 20th. Uh, so uh, uh, based on this model, uh, we're looking at a, um, uh, you know, a, 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 an imminent rally, a, a, another leg upward at this point. Um, yeah. However, we also have other <laughs> work that we do, and sometimes the, the stuff doesn't agree. So here's a cycle projection I was working on yesterday to try to analyze the cyclic work with Bitcoin. And again, we've got just about 10 years of trading history, so it's not a lot. But this is what our cycle pattern looks like there. Instead of a move upward, we're looking for a decline into the 29th of, um, of uh, March. Uh, and so we'll see what actually plays out there. Wow. Tim, you are a master at this, and we love having you on. We're going to have you again in two weeks, and thank you so much. This is such an interesting thing. Financial Cycles Weekly, do you have any uh, webinars coming up, Tim? We do indeed. Go to bit.ly. Let's, cover, yeah, let's, let's, co let's cover that at went to, went to, went for, after we pay a few bills, okay? Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, uh, we're back with Tim Boston. You've got a webinar coming up, but one of our favorites. Do, uh, indeed, yes, indeed. Let's get that uh, page up here. Uh, go to bit.ly slash Tim Larry P. Uh, everything's lowercase except for the initials T, L, and P. Uh, make those uppercase, and that will get you to a special link that will give you access uh, on a premier basis to our next free webinar, which we've got to, uh, coming up a little later this week. And so we'll be uh, sharing the information on that. We'll be talking about what's working now in astro trading, uh, so you can get an overall update on the, the situation there. And, of course, your questions and comments about Bitcoin, metals, the markets in general, anything are, are welcome during that session. Uh, so we try to make those interactive. So that's a good place to, uh, get, the, to get the lowdown and find out how you can get even more information after that. Oh, this is great, Tim. Thank you very much for being our guest. 
you know, it's very, very well. It's a, well, you know, it's so such good information, and I, uh, you're a really good presenter, and uh, we want to thank you very much for being on. We'll have you on again soon, and be safe down there in Florida. I hear the real estate's going up about ten percent a day. Is that about right? Yeah, it's almost like Bitcoin, you know. So. <laughs> It's Maybe crazy there later. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, at least you can plant tulips on the real estate, right? <laughs> yeah. Can you tell the folks again how they could reach you or their email? Uh... Sure, Tim at timbost dot com. Been having some problems with email here this morning, but typically that does work. T I M at T I M B O S T dot com. And uh, that will get you a direct connection there. I'm also started hanging out on this new uh, app called uh, Clubhouse. Uh, if you're not on Clubhouse, join me there, and uh, you go that, to join. Yeah. Uh, that that is a new audio only social media app, and it's very interesting. People get together and talk about Bitcoin and the markets and astrology and everything else. Uh, I'm on there two or three times a week and having informal chats. It's a good way to have a, an in-depth conversation. So go to joinclubhouse.com, and uh, you can sign up there. It's kind of a waiting list thing by invitation. Do a search for me, Tim Boss, there, and I'll give you an invite. Hey, thank you very much, Tim. We'll Thanks. be right back to you bet. We'll be back tomorrow, folks. 877-927-6648. Don't miss Basil's show tonight.